Hi guys, welcome to Rock and Roll Bride TV. Now, some of you might remember um, last week I did a Skype interview uh, with Photo Night Live, and photographer Ali Lovegrove was also part of that. And she had a few more questions she wanted to ask me, so I'm going to do uh, four four more videos in um, every week. I'm going to post one every week um, with different aspects of blogging. The first one that we're going to tackle today is basics, blogging basics. Hi, Kat. Following on from our Photo Night Live interview that we did a week or so ago, there's still a few questions that I wanted to ask you if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've had my blog now for about four months and started it because that I felt it would be more personal than a website. So I just wanted to know if for other people that are thinking of doing the same, they're not quite ready to have a website yet and they want to go down the blog route first, what would be your initial advice to people wanting to start out from that point and going from there? Okay, so first of all you need to decide what platform you're going to use to host it on. Mm -hmm. So there's loads of different options, WordPress, Blogger, TypePad, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I personally would always go for WordPress just because it looks the most professional because you can have it completely clean with no, like, no one else's branding on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would basically just get going, just um, start writing, and just, you know, things like branding and logos and stuff are important, but in the beginning, just literally just get going and mm -hmm. see what happens. Okay, so WordPress would definitely be the one you'd go for. Is there any reason why you'd choose WordPress over the rest? Um, just because it is the most easily cust customizable. Mm -hmm. um, so there's loads of different templates you can get, mm -hmm. or you can create your own, and um, you can keep it as clean or as busy as you like. Okay. I just find it, and the, it's really the interface is really easy to use, and mm -hmm. there's so much you can put on it. Mm -hmm. Something that I did with mine is the WordPress came with a free, um, however it was, <laughs> Ali Lovegrove Photography. WordPress. Something. Yeah. Com. Um, and I changed that straight away to Ali Lovegrove Photography Blog .com. Yeah. Is that something that you'd advise everyone to do so it looks more professional? Yeah, yeah, basically it does. It looks more professional to have the .com and it's something ridiculous like ten pound a year. Yeah. Um, or you can get the .co .uk for a bit cheaper. Um, but yeah, definitely, especially if you're going to link it with. If you do have a website, people that do that have a website and then want to get a blog as well to have mm. them as the same domain mm -hmm. um, and then link together just looks a lot more professional. Okay. Um, and when people are first starting out with that first ever post. Um, and you have no idea what to write you know you want to write a blog but you don't know what, what to say what would you advise um, well if you like if you're a photographer say and you've shot mm -hmm. a wedding or a photo shoot then obviously that's the sort of thing you would blog about mm -hmm. um, but if you haven't like introduce yourself just get practicing and practice writing something along the lines of hi this is my blog this is what I'm about and mm -hmm. To be honest, probably not that many people will look at it to begin with, mm. but it's just that initial getting into it in the beginning mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. hardest thing. So just something like, this is me, this is what mm. I'm about. So it's I think for the first few months or so, it's probably worth writing just for yourself and act like no one's reading it, or would yeah. you suggest writing it for your end user straight away? Um, well, it depends like why you're starting it. Like If you're a photographer, then you may have clients already, or you know, you've got people that you speak to on Twitter that might mm. see it but if you were like for example when I started mine it was just like this is my wedding and I kind of use it like an online diary like mm -hmm. I didn't really expect other people to read it it was mm -hmm. just like a way of me keeping everything together so I was literally just writing it for myself and then other people happened to read it so I think it depends on what your goal is whether mm -hmm. it's to be like a personal blog or to be like for a business like a photographer mm -hmm. then I think you do have to think about who's going to read it even if it's only a very few people mm -hmm. in the beginning but don't sort of worry about it just write mm -hmm. as you would speak sort of yeah. that's always the easiest way of describing it really and then you've got that connection with you know it's like your clients will see you as like a real person mm. so that's the beauty of having a blog really okay um, and going back to the basics say with WordPress there's yeah. so many free templates out there that you can use and there's you can have all different sorts of columns and rows however many you want what would you what would your best advice be to have that good setup initially I mean you may want to change it further down the line yeah. but for starting out what would that blog look like layout wise okay I would say the most important thing is to keep it clean and easy to navigate like as you said you can have one column two three mm -hmm. you know you can have so many different sort of layouts mm -hmm. um, but just to keep it easy to, to navigate and to keep it clean because as I say again if we're talking about photographers you are will be showcasing your work on mm -hmm. your blog it's like your gallery but online as opposed to in a studio mm -hmm. um, and if you're a wedding blogger as well blogging other people's pictures you want them to be easy to see and not to be distracted by mm -hmm. loads of stuff mm -hmm. so um, I've mine is pretty much white apart from my header and my links and stuff mm -hmm. and it just <coughs> so it makes it really 
easy to navigate. Okay, so in, in the interest of keeping the layout crisp and clean, what would you say are the best things to have on offer, so about me's testimonials and that kind of thing? Um, I think the most important thing for anyone that's got a blog is their about me page. Like, it should be really easy to find. It should be one of the first things that you write. So you just want to have, like, a couple of paragraphs or even just one paragraph about who you are, what you do, you know, if you're a photographer, a wedding blogger, where you live, your age, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, then to have a picture of yourself, um, which I think is really important. A lot of people don't do it, um, especially photographers, because they mm. want to be behind the camera. But when you're reading a blog, the beauty of reading a website, I mean a blog, sorry, as opposed to say a magazine, is that personal connection. Mm -hmm. So by having a picture there, people automatically feel more like they know you. Mm -hmm. It's like a subconscious thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important. And the next most important thing is having contact information. So whether mm -hmm. it's your actual... Um, email or contact form just so people can mm. get in contact with you um, and you know if you're a photographer you might want to put your prices on there if you're a wedding blogger or another kind of blogger you might want to put information about how to you know submissions and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah mm -hmm. okay for the layout of the blog what would you say is the the main thing that makes it really stand out above its competitors whether it be photography or against other wedding blogs or do you do it purely based on how you want it to look rather than thinking about how others look um, I think when you first start, just to have it as how you want it to look, right? Mm -hmm. Just when you're literally right at the beginning, just don't think about what other people are doing. Um, once you get into it a bit more, then, you know, you might get a certain type of... It was for a photographer, say, you might get another certain type of client that you want to mm -hmm. aim it towards. But um, when I started mine, for example, I've always really liked pink and I've always <laughs> really liked... Mm -hmm you know rock and roll kind of thing so mm -hmm. that's where my branding came from mm -hmm. but literally when you first start I wouldn't worry about that stuff too much just okay. keep it quite clean straightforward simple and just get the content up mm -hmm. as long as the it's not offensive the way mm -hmm. it looks like really flashy or mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's fine and with branding in mind as well so as you say when you're first starting out not to worry about it but is it a good idea to have in mind um, where you're wanting it to go and what what you feel your brand is before starting or do you develop it as you go along um, I think there's two different sort of areas here between a blog and a business mm -hmm. um, and I think they should be as one mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. but in terms of just blogging I would say literally right at the beginning just keep it simple and just start mm -hmm. but if you're going to think about your business as a whole when you sort of launch yourself then I think thinking about your branding is really important mm -hmm. because you want to have a brand that's reflective of you in the same way that you want to write the way that people are going to connect to you as a person you want your brand to be a reflection of you mm -hmm. and I think it's something that's going to be constantly evolving mm -hmm. like my branding's quite polished at the moment mm -hmm. I've got it where I like it but I'm still always thinking about where I want to take it next mm -hmm. and I'm going to be doing some new things with it soon so it's like a constantly evolving thing okay Okay. Um, for your About Me page, something that I was want to, once told is that you should get someone else to write it for you because they can obviously see things that you might not right. see. Is that something that you'd go for or would you prefer to just keep control of it yourself and say what you want to? Well, I think that About Me pages in the third person are a bit weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that as a blog, it's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. So you should be writing as if you're talking to that person, like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I would disagree. Okay. <laughs> I would say, again, um, just talk as if you're talking, telling someone about mm -hmm. yourself rather than saying, Ali is a photographer. From yeah. Yeah. The, you know, okay. Yeah. Um, and with the writing style as well, so presumably, obviously you wouldn't write your blog posts in third person whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but if you were starting out and didn't think you were that great at writing and were a bit worried about how you might come across, is that something that you develop over time, your writing skills get better? Or would it be better to have someone write it for you using questionnaires for your couples, for example? Um, I think... Um when, well, no one's born a brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. So when you first start it, just write as you would speak and your writing style will just evolve. Like when I first started writing my blog, it was really short, the things I wrote. You know, there's so much to learn about, you know, phrasing and w what language works mm -hmm. well. It's like, it's like an art mm -hmm. and not everyone's going to be brilliant at that straight away. Mm -hmm. um, I started writing really when I was at uni. I did a course, it was actually a film course, but it was an essay course. So I really learned a lot about how to phrase things and how to write. So it is like a constantly evolving thing. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, just get going and just write, mm -hmm. as I keep saying, as you would speak. And mm -hmm. then it will constantly evolve and you'll get your get your flow okay <laughs> and and using humor as well would that be something to steer clear of just in case it really doesn't go down very well or would you still follow the route of your personal style uh, and how you talk i think sometimes 
it's hard to get one of the hardest things is to get your personality across just in words mm -hmm. and like things like sarcasm don't come across very well in mm -hmm. like people don't quite get it especially mm -hmm. when you've got people from other languages like other countries yeah. reading it like this English humour not, might not come across in the way you write it mm -hmm. I wouldn't say steer clear of it but just be aware of if someone else doesn't know you reading mm. it how that comes across okay. I mean I'm probably more sarcastic in real life than mm -hmm. I am on my blog <laughs> okay that's great thanks so much Kat I think everyone's going to get a lot out of that no worries